Hello, everyone. Uh, we are now in week four of our technical writing course, and this week's lesson focuses on resources. Um, so what this lesson is all about is um, finding and then properly integrating research or source material into your own writing. So as we are crafting our arguments about and our, our, our different documents about the topics, the controversial topics that we chose earlier in the course, um, our arguments need to be research-based. We need to be digging around in the library databases, on Google, Google Scholar, things like that, to find sources um, from credible places, academic journals, um, websites associated with the medical field, et cetera, and constructing or using that evidence to build our own arguments. And so the work this week, we have two assignments. Um, and the work in both assignments um, is essentially challenging you to be able to do this kind of research and properly cite it um, and give credit to where it came from. So what I wanted to do this week um, is make a short video where we can look at both of the assignment prompts and I can kind of go over them with you and explain the differences and the intricacies of them. Uh, so let's jump in to get started. Let's just go over the announcement together real quick. Um, so we have an idea of what we're working with for the week. So here's our announcement, our week four resources. Our first assignment is the summary assignment, which is due Friday the 31st by 11.59. Um, and our second assignment is the references assignment, which is due Sunday, um, Sunday the 2nd at 11.59. Um, so there's no discussion or anything this week, just these two assignments that are going to have you doing research and then writing about that research. So um, let me get started with the summary assignment. Um, okay, so this is what the assignment prompt looks like for the summary assignment. It says the purpose of this assignment is to demonstrate your ability to summarize, paraphrase, and appropriately quote the work of others using technical writing standards and correct citation format. Um, all right, so there's a couple of words in there that I just want to clarify or define. Um, summarizing, again, meaning summarizing meaning to sort of explain the overall idea. Um, if you summarize a movie to someone, you kind of explain the main plot points of the movie. To paraphrase is to take a passage from a text or from a source and put it into your own words, um, trying your best to maintain the same feel, the same meaning, the same intentions as the original author, but you have changed the, changed the wording to fit your own voice and tone. Something that is very important to consider here is that when you paraphrase from a source, you still need to provide in-text citation for it. Even though it's your own words and it's not a direct quotation, you are still, they're your own words, but they're your own words explaining someone else's idea. And so you still need to give that idea credit. And then finally, quoting the work, um, direct quotations with citations. When it says technical writing standards and correct citation format, the citation format that I'm ideally looking for is the APA style format. And I'm going to um, go into that a little bit more uh, towards the end of this video. Um, so uh, this assignment has level two writing guidelines, which you can um, review, I believe in the syllabus. Um, as you're writing, think about third person point of view, avoiding those first person I, me, my statements, and those second person you, your statements. So, the actual assignment it says using the PMI online library, locate a peer reviewed article related to the controversial topic that you selected. Um, and so, in order to do that, you're going to click library in the Blackboard menu. You can then click on ProQuest, which is one of the databases. And then you can click the box, box next to peer reviewed. This will filter the available um, information, the available sources down to those that are just peer reviewed. And then you can type in search terms related to your topic um, and then select a relevant article that you could use to support your topic. So that is how the research process is going to go for this, digging around on library database systems. 
um, the ProQuest, like all library database systems, they can be a little tricky to use. It's worth taking, it's not as easy as simple Google search. Um, sometimes you kind of have to play with the different tunings of filters and settings in order to get what you want. But for the most part, you kind of treat it like a Google search. Um, and the library databases like ProQuest link up to um, just usually thousands and thousands of different academic and scholarly and medical field scientific journals that people um, in the profession publish articles and papers in. So the point of researching in a library database like this is that, and especially by researching peer-reviewed articles, is that you're going to find sources that are highly credible, that come from extremely reliable, credible sources. Okay, so you do your research and then you find an article that you like that relates to your source, your actual writing assignment then becomes writing a one to two page summary of the article. And the summary here, remember you're trying to, um, you read the article, now you're basically trying to tell your reader what it's all about. Um, it needs to include an introduction to the article. This means that you should introduce the author and the article and perhaps the journal that it came from. So this might be in your first or second sentence of your summary. You might say, um, in um, John Smith's article, Helping People During the Pandemic, published in World Health Journal in 2020, um, it discusses blah, blah, blah. So you kind of want to name drop the author, the article, and the journal title if possible. Um, the second idea, the second thing that your writing needs to do is it needs to paraphrase two specific ideas or details from the article. Remember, when paraphrasing, you still are going to use parenthetical, end of sentence, um, APA style um, in-text citations. So you're still going to give credit directly to the source. So the idea is like, if you find a passage in the article that's just really important, you want to put that passage into your own words and then cite where you got it from. It also needs to include appropriate in-text citations, which we've just been talking about, as well as one direct quote. So remember, a direct quote is where you open the quotation marks and you take word for word exactly how it was said in the source and you plug it into your own paper. It then also needs to include a conclusion, um, some kind of wrapped up culminating statement about this about your summary or about the paper itself, and then a properly formatted reference for the article. So um, in terms of the in-text citations and the reference, I will get into that just a little bit more after we look at the reference assignment. Um, so that's it. Please note that the 21 points available, 16 of which are for your effectively paraphrasing, quoting, and citing, and then five for the writing level. Um, and make sure that you have at least that first, that one full page, ideally, um, closer to two page summary. So that is the summary assignment. Let's jump over um, real quick to the references assignment. Um, the references assignment, it says the purpose of this is to demonstrate your ability to differentiate different types of sources, so differentiate types of sources and to document sources correctly in a reference list. So what you need to do is you need to find three different sources. One of them needs to come from the PMI online library. I am totally fine if this PMI, PMI, this first source is the same as the one that you use for the summary assignment, that's cool. You then also need to find a professional or official website, ideally looking, um, the, the more credible and reliable the website seems. So try to avoid like blogs and personal, um, personal kind of websites, keep it more to like official, official businesses or official institutions like the CDC, right? Um, and then just a general web search. So you're gonna find three different sources. You are then going to write a one paragraph summary of each source. So three total paragraphs, you're gonna write a paragraph summary of source A, paragraph summary of source B, paragraph summary of source C. These summaries need to include in-text citations because you are summarizing information from the text. So you're going to have an in-text citation um, in each of those sources. You are then going to rank the sources from most reliable to least reliable. And you want to use criteria for evaluating sources that can be found in this lesson. 
um, to explain and support your ranking. So you're trying to think about which of these sources is the most believable, the most trustworthy. And then you want to create a reference page for your three sources. Again, you can follow the reference guidelines within this lesson, and I'm also going to go over that with you right now. Um, so this one, you're basically just writing three paragraphs and then a little bit of an explanation as to why you ranked them that way. Um, you can do it just like one, two, three, paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, in whatever order that you think is the most reliable. Um, and then just like a short paragraph saying why you ranked them that way. Um, and then a reference page. One thing to note um, is there's this assignment down here. It says include the term summary. It, it wants you to, lab, to label the reference assignment as the summary assignment. That's a mistake. Um, you can label this assignment references and then your last name or first name. That's fine. Um, okay, so now that we've looked at the prompts, um, the next thing I want to share with you guys is a website to kind of help you with all of this. So this is a website that I will reference regularly if I haven't already done so. Um, I do it in the comments of papers. I do it in these videos. I do it in this website is just a really important one for our purposes. And it is the OWL Purdue University Online Writing Lab. So OWL Online Writing Lab. You can find this by just Googling OWL Purdue APA. And what this is, is basically the best online style guide for the APA publication manual. So the APA, um, the American Psychological Association, is an organization that creates and maintains and updates a set of rules and guidelines for writing academic papers and properly citing and referencing um, your research. So on this website, you'll have um, an APA overview workshop, an APA formatting and style guide, which will explain to you how to format your papers. Um, the things that are really important here, um, if we look here at the um, formatting and style guide, is you have on the left here some um, links on how to do your research itself, um, and then um, some resources to help you, as well as just an overview in terms of like what font should be, spacing, things like that. Um, and then the most important stuff is that you have guides here on how to do the parenthetical in-text citations, as well as how to do the complete references at the end of your papers. Um, so there are two main steps, um, I guess three main steps to formatting a paper in the APA style. And that the first is that you have just the general paper formatting in terms of font and headers and all of that, which is explained here under the general APA guidelines. The second step for an APA paper is that you have parenthetical in-text citations. They will look like this. It is basically that you use the author's name and then the year in parentheses, and you'll, so it'll be something like Jones, 1998, states, or found, or um, noted. Um, generally in APA, they use past tense for these little lead-in phrases. Um, and then you'll just, that lets us know that this little bit of writing in your paper or in your paragraph is from someone else. It's someone else's idea, not your own. And then finally, after the, at the end of an APA paper, you have what is known as your references list. And so here there are all sorts of guidelines um, on this website to go over how to put together a reference list. Um, I'm keeping this kind of generalized and not going into too big of a detail, um, too much detail explaining the specifics of how to do all this because uh, this isn't really something that you just memorize and learn and then and then you're done with it. Um, it's the it's the sort of thing that you just you go back to and kind of figure out for each different type of source. How do I reference this one, or how do I do the in-text citation for it? It's it's not a learn this system and then you're done sort of thing. Um, even professional writers who are publishing papers all the time are usually not like instantly able to remember exactly what order things go in a reference. Um, it's just the sort of thing that you come to the website and you look up how to do it. I will give you a quick warning right here. Um, this is um, Citation Machine, which you can use to generate the references for you. 
I would be careful with this. Um, more often than not, it makes mistakes um, that can be sniffed out by annoying English teachers like me. Um, it's just, it's not, this isn't a hard process. It's just taking the 10 minutes or so to look through the website and think what type of source it is. So if you got a source from the databases, you're looking at it on the computer, which means it's an electronic source. And you click on that, and then it would give you all the information on how to do it yourself. Um, so that's pretty much it for the week. We have those two assignments. Neither of them is, is all that challenging or difficult or, or, or long or intensive, I don't think. But um, the research part of it might be. And again, the importance of this lesson, the emphasis, is being able to do effective research, being able to write about that research effectively and to communicate that research, and most importantly, to properly cite and integrate that research into your own writing in a way that avoids things like plagiarism or just um, unclaiming ideas as your own that are not. Um, that's it. I hope that this video was helpful with these two assignments. Uh, let me know if you guys have any other questions for the week. I'm always happy to help.